Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Furnace by Hobby World and Arcane Wonders. This is a two to four player game for ages 13 and up, and it takes roughly 45 minutes to about an hour to play. Additionally, we'll talk a little bit about the Intervellum expansion. This is going to be uh, including a one player version to the game and a fifth player if you'd like, as well as a bunch of other things. In the game, you're playing as a 19th century industrialist during the technological revolution. You'll be purchasing facilities, you'll be using those facilities to generate resources, which will in turn generate you currency. Yes, the most, the strongest capitalist in the game at the end is going to be the winner. You'll utilize your tokens to bid on different facilities and upgrades. Stronger tokens will allow you to gain the card, whereas little ones will allow you to gain some type of resource benefit. And you're going to play all your tokens and gather and then create with what you have built. Tableau management and bidding. Then you're going to go to the next round and do the same thing. And you'll do this up to four times. And after the fourth round, you're going to check to see who has the most money. Whoever has the most money is the winner of the game, Furnace. Let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, our review. To set up a game of Furnace, the first thing you'll do is you'll determine the number of players playing the game. Each of those players is gonna get a starting player card, four tokens ranging from one, two, three, and four. You'll be getting uh, a little bidding wheel if you're playing with the expansion that has numbers on both sides. And of course, your player marker to remain, remind you what color you are as you drop your discs down on the buildings you'll be purchasing. You'll also get a starting facility, which is gonna come with starting resources, which will attach to your player card so that you don't forget. Um, then you're gonna go ahead and set up the, the play space, the tableau area. Based on the number of players playing the game is how many of these cards come out. I have a four player game set up, so there are eight of these cards that you can bid on. With the Interbellum expansion comes three new additional cards that go to the end, doesn't matter what order. And you're also going to have these upgrades, which you can add to facilities whenever you get them from these cards here. And you're gonna place one of them on each of the upgraded locations. The rest of all this is just tokens. You have money, you have these uh, wrenches that are going to allow you to upgrade your buildings, and then you have the three different types of resources, coal and barrels and steel, some tokens that will allow you to times three your tokens if need be if you run out of them, and then some extra accessories that you'll utilize for bidding depending on what your character is because they all have their own unique player abilities. Finally, you'll take the round marker, you'll place it on number one, you'll set it on the top of the round track, and give some player the first player or first bidder marker. Then, after that, make sure the deck's on the left-hand side, you're ready to go. Furnace is played in rounds, and rounds are played in turns, and turns are used to bid. You are going to be taking one of your four different markers, either a four, three, two, or one, and placing out any of the cards that you see in the area. In a four-player game, there are 11 different cards. Each of them are basically either facilities or upgrades, and you can choose this and place one down. The markers are based on their lowest value on top and their highest value on bottom. So if red wants this industrial location and then yellow goes next and wants the same one, if yellow placed a three and red placed a four, the four is on bottom and the three is on top. And each player is just gonna place one marker out. They'll place a marker on one of the cards and pass. Next player, marker on one of the cards and pass. And so on and so forth. And until each of the markers for all of the rounds have been placed. Once all the markers on the rounds have been placed, you're gonna go ahead and start from left and go all the way to the right. And you'll start by giving every player who is not the lowest on the totem pole a resource or resources based on whatever the top of the card is. So for instance, if I had this card here, this card says two coal on the very top, everybody who's not that big marker on the bottom is gonna get two coal. And the player who bid the highest, the highest number value, is going to take the card itself and put it into their tableau area, which is where they're going, what they're gonna to use to produce during the produce round. And you'll go from one to the next to the next all the way across. Anything that isn't bid on is gonna be discarded back to the game box and everything that is is either going to give you a bonus or the actual card. Upgrade cards are gonna give you just the upgrade marker, which you'll place and set aside. And during every single one of the rounds where you're producing, you can choose a card to place this on, but you can only have one of these on each of your cards. And these provide some type of benefit, like if this card's selling effects are fully resolved, you get a barrel, which is actually pretty good. Additionally, the upgrade cards, just like the rest of the effects in the above of the, of the different industrial buildings here, when you place a marker on one of these guys, if you place a two, three, or a four, you can gain the effects of these, up to that many times on the very top, and you get a choice. I place a two on this one here that either gives me a, two, uh, a victory point or I can spend two coal for a wrench. I can choose to spend two coal twice for two wrenches, gain two victory points, or one of each with a two, or three times if I placed a three, and so on and so forth. 
After all this has been resolved and you gain all the cards you can get and any of the upgrades, then you're going to produce. And producing is easy. You'll go from each card of your choice from top to bottom and you're gonna gain the effects of these cards. You can skip effects, but you may never go from top to uh, from bottom to top. You always have to go all the way down and once you finish a card, that's it. If you want, you can upgrade a card first. And as long as you haven't used that card, you're going to be able to use the effects of that card on the same round or the same producing phase. Once you have used all the cards that you can or want to, then you're going to be done. And once everybody has done this simultaneously, the next round will begin with new cards coming from the deck, going down and filling the spaces as well as upgrades, players getting their tokens back, and once again bidding with a new bidder going clockwise. Four rounds of play, and at the end of the fourth round, you'll check to see who has the most money. The player who has the most money is the winner of the game, Furnace. Okay, how do I think about it? Furnace is a tableau management bidding game, and it feels kind of like it's a wonderful world, but instead of drafting, you're bidding on the cards available in front of you. Those cards will generate you either bonus effects, or you're going to take them as basically an industrial building, which you can then use to produce its effect every turn. Some are better than others, and some are better than others depending on what you're trying to do. Upgrades are also available to you with the expansion of Intervellum, which you can add to your cards and kind of mix and match them. Um, and you're basically just trying to build and create the best engine possible. It's thinky, it's smart, it's quick, and it's very straightforward. You know what you're going to be doing during the game. I wish the game had a player reference, but it is quite simple. There's two phases and four rounds. Phase one, the bidding phase going clockwise, Phase two, producing whatever you have based on cards one at a time and finishing, and then rinsing and repeating to the next round, doing that four times, and whoever has the most money is the winner. Yes, it's straightforward, but how you choose to utilize your cards matters. It's crunchy, and it has this really great feel during the bidding system, watching what other players are doing, what they have and types of engines they're trying to create, and utilizing your tokens to their best advantages. Speaking of tokens, there are additional tokens in the game based on the characters that you get from the game that can give you either a bonus bidding token, or sometimes they'll allow you to compensate in some other way. And there's a quite large variety of these guys here. Each of the different starting buildings also kind of has its own type of way with it. Like for instance, one might start with a barrel for you, might always produce an upgrade, uh, and can let you spend steel for coal and victory points. Whereas another one might allow you to, to dump barrels for victory points uh, and also might allow you to upgrade cards using the cogs and coal. And each of them kind of all have the ability to upgrade cards on their own, but it does it in a unique way. And each every time you play this game with a new one of these cards, it's gonna feel different. And because the deck is always changing and how you're playing it, each of the tableau is gonna be different as well. What I also love about this game is upgrading cards. Upgrading cards are kind of simple, and it's the one thing that kind of threw us off that we didn't really understand is that when you look at your card here, the top is always going to be the benefit you get if you do not get this card during the bidding phase. The bottom portion from top to bottom is going to be what you generate in resources. So for instance, if I had this one here, this is a more easy one to explain, this is going to generate you two coal if you place a lower value than anybody else during the bidding phase. Just straight up two coal. If you get the card though, during production, you're going to gain two coal every round. Additionally, there's white spaces or white like rows here that do nothing. If it's white, it doesn't do anything. These markers don't matter unless you upgrade the card. When you upgrade the card with your main card's effect, or if you find another card that lets you upgrade, then that white is going to turn into an actual fill filled in space. And now you can utilize not only the top portion, but the white space that was previously not there. It's kind of like hidden and just letting you know on the front card that this is what you'll get if you upgrade it. So upgrading cards is gonna make the card more, uh, more beneficial, stronger. And cards like this one here give a specific effect every round, but also will start producing you resources when you upgrade the card itself. And each of the cards always start unupgraded, and you have to utilize the cards that you have and what you've purchased, and of course all the resources you gain to upgrade cards. More upgraded cards means more bonus actions, and how you choose to utilize your cards to gain more money is gonna be very important in the game. I like this game a lot. I love engine builder games, I love bidding games, I like constructing things and creating this specific type of machine that works a very specific way. 
And obviously the best laid plans can sometimes fail. Sometimes players are gonna get the cards you want, you didn't bid well enough or in the right locations. It actually reminds me of this uh, Critter Kitchen game I recently played on a live stream, and it feels a lot like that, the bidding system. Now, instead of that game where you have a certain number of critters that will gain you a certain number of resources based on what you place, this is all about value on your tokens. Higher value, more likely to get the card, lower value, less likely. Um, and sometimes you actually want the lower value. You actually want the resources as opposed to the actual card itself, depending on what you're trying to strategize. Uh, the expansion itself is pretty cool as well. I like the upgrades. There's certain things I don't like about it. I don't want the extra markers. I kind of would recommend taking these guys out and just having the straight four. Um, in the expansion, you also can generate uh, another bidding marker with your coal, which is usually typically made as a resource. And in the original game, you're left with a lot of extra coal, so what they did is kind of turned it into a chip in itself that you can be like, I'm gonna actually bid six coal, and now this is a stronger uh, resource value than my four token, so you can beat somebody out with it, which in general works, but it just kind of slogs the game down a little bit more. So it, it's not terrible to use, but it's also not my favorite. I think, I think playing with just the four tokens is probably my preferred way to go about it, but I do love the upgrades. I like being able to switch them and move them around. Customizing those guys and placing them on certain cards, depending on when you get them, is gonna be really, really cool for this game. I like that it's quick, it's fast, it's crunchy, and it feels good. The quality of the game, Excellent. This is an Arcane Wonders game. All the tokens are nice and thick. The wooded tokens here are great. All the resources are wonderful. And even the basic chips are double thick and feel good to the touch. Cards are high quality. Artwork is solid. I feel like I'm playing in the Industrial Revolution. I feel like I'm this wealthy business owner capitalist trying to gain new, unique factories that interwork and work together. Overall, Furnace is an excellent engine builder game with a great bidding system, and if you like those type of games, and you like them quick and straightforward with a lot of complexity, then this is the game to check out. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, Furnace. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description, as well as, of course, the Interbellum expansion if you want that solo player mode, if you have five players and you wanna put that fifth player in, and of course, the upgrades, as well as the ability to start utilizing your coal as an extra way to spend for bidding. If you get the base game and you don't like the fact that you have extra coal and you want to actually have that, this is like the nice expansion to add for that. But at least check out the base game in and of itself because it's a really, really great game on its own. All right, guys, there is a website on filtergame.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our live streams are every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we have game designers on, we play games, showcase games, whatnot at 6.30 p.m. PST, which is where we sell games, talk about games, and also play games. All right, subscribe if you think we've earned it, if you think we've deserved your subscription, if you watched more than one of our videos here in the past and you've, uh, you're still sitting here looking and maybe that, that button's still red, please give it a click. We do greatly appreciate it. Or not, it's okay. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to creating some wonderful industrial buildings during the revolution with you next time.